I saw the Grateful Dead in this arena in 1987. I was seated right there. How weird. It's, it's so, it's such an honor to be here. And it's wild. Just another day following Bobby Kennedy Jr. at a Donald Trump rally in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I mean, what? That's totally normal. Liz Cheney's out there <laughs> with Kamala Harris. And there's Bobby Kennedy calling to protect women's sports at a Trump rally. It's a realignment. It's unbelievable. And it, the fact that it's here is even sweeter. Imagine if you're, and just pause for one moment. Imagine you're Donald Trump. You're from New York City. You become famous in New York City. You make your fortune in New York City. And all of a sudden, the leadership of New York City decides they're going to destroy you because they don't like your politics. And so they, yeah, boo. Imagine if that were you, though. And they try and take everything that you have. They try and put you in prison. They try and put your children in prison. If that happened to you, how often do you think you'd be going back to New York City? How about never? And yet he's here. It's like getting thrown out of a bar. And you think to yourself, well, you know, all my friends are in the bar. And you approach the door and there's the bouncer like, you're not allowed in here. But from behind the bouncer, you hear the cheers of your friend, come on in! And the bouncer hangs his head in shame. Ugh. He's embarrassed that he's working for the man trying to keep the most popular person out of the bar. And that's Donald Trump back in the city that produced him with no embarrassment at all in a room full of his friends. The stones that takes, the bravery that takes is incredible. Donald Trump's going to win. He's going to win. I know that that's true. Why is Donald Trump going to win? The people he's about to defeat have no idea. And they're panicked. They have no idea why people like Donald Trump. And their first theory was, well, Donald Trump is evil, so half the country's evil also. And that's one of the reasons they spent the last four years trying to destroy the country, because they're mad at its voters for liking Donald Trump. How much easier would it have been just to pause for 20 minutes and ask yourself honestly in some silent place, why do people like Donald Trump? And if they had been honest enough to ask themselves that question, they would have come up with the two main reasons, and here what they, here's what they are. The first reason that people like Donald Trump is because he likes them. That's why. And it's real. Affection is something you can't fake. I don't care how many times Kamala Harris would tell me she loves me, I don't believe her. I saw her kiss her husband with a mask on. A mask on. That's her version of love. It's fake. It's not real. They spent 10 years telling you Trump is a hater. Do you feel that on him? No, you don't. Because it's not there. I've spent a lot of time with Trump. And there's not one moment I've ever been with him off camera where he's spending his time grousing about people he hates. Ever. He's talking about the people and the country he loves in his private time. Trust me. And people know in a country that has been taken over by a leadership class that actually despises them and their values and their history and their culture and their customs, really hates them to the point that it's trying to replace them, they know someone who actually has affection for them, and that's Donald Trump. And it's requited. It's requited. They know. When he goes to McDonald's and serves fries, like, he's not faking that at all. That's why that worked. Democratic media consultants are like, how, are, how is that working? Because it's real. That's why. And the second reason that people love Trump, and I put myself in this category, it's why I'm here today, is because he's liberated us in the deepest and truest sense. And the liberation he has brought to us is the liberation from the obligation to tell lies. Donald Trump has made it possible for the rest of us to tell the truth about the world around us. And that's the single most liberating thing you can do for people. If you want to enslave people, if you want to degrade them, force them to tell lies. And they have. They force us to lie about everything at gunpoint, effectively. They put people in prison for refusing to lie. And not just the obvious lies that men can become women or 
Vladimir Putin blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. No, honestly, he did. January 6th was an insurrection. They were unarmed, but it was very insurrectiony. Not even the obvious ones, but the big lie. You know what the big lie is? The big lie is that they're impressive. That's what the big lie is. That the people in charge have somehow earned the right to rule over you, and they haven't. And you know that. These are the single most useless people in the United States. They have no skills whatsoever. They've got three quarters of the money, and they didn't earn it. They set up a system precisely for the purpose of awarding themselves wealth and power when it's undeserved. You look at Liz Cheney and you ask yourself honestly, what skill could she possibly have that allowed her to send hundreds of thousands of people to their deaths? Did she earn that? I don't think she did. No fair system would make Liz Cheney powerful. No fair system would make Larry Fink rich. No fair system would elevate someone like Kamala Harris to a presidential nomination. She's never been accused of doing anything useful. She has precisely no achievements. She's a nominee without getting a single vote. She is a metaphor for the system they created to make themselves rich and powerful. And then they have the gall to lecture you, the people who can actually change a flat tire and repair a power grid, who have useful jobs, who pay your taxes and work 40 hours a week, lecture you that you are somehow immoral. And Donald Trump has empowered the rest of us through mostly just sticking around in the face of their hate and abuse and persecution. He has given the rest of us the right to call BS on the charade. No, you are not better than us. No, you are not smarter than us. No, you do not deserve what you have. You probably stole it. No, you're not going to bully me into silence anymore. And I can promise you at this point, Nine days out, when Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Elon Musk and Tulsi Gabbard and pretty much every high school senior and college shorty girl in the country has come out finally say, yeah, I am for Donald Trump, actually. When the entire country has realized there is nothing embarrassing about this, what's embarrassing is to take a perfectly great country and destroy it as they have. I'm not ashamed you should be. At that moment, it's going to be pretty tough for them, 10 days from now, to look in the eye to America with a straight face. It's going to be pretty hard to look at us and say, you know what, Kamala Harris, she's just, she got 85 million votes because she's just so impressive. As the first Samoan, Malaysian, low IQ, former California prosecutor ever to be elected president, it was just a groundswell of popular support. And anyone who thinks otherwise is just a freak or a criminal. At this stage of the game, after nine years of listening to their lies and finding every single one of them totally false, no, it's not safe and effective, and no, she's not impressive. It's very hard for me to believe the rest of us are going to say, you know what, Joe Scarborough, you're right. You're right. She won fair and square because she's just so impressive. I don't think so. And to me, that is liberation. It's the freedom to say what's obviously true as a free man and not a slave. And I just want to say thank you, Donald Trump, for that.